Okay, so today we're going to talk about sacroiliac joint pain and treatment. Basically, sacroiliac joint pain has been around for quite some time. And we can go back to literature and see it for many, many years. I think the major problem with sacroiliac joint pain has been treatment issues and diagnostic issues. I believe it's more common in patients who have had previous lumbar spine fusions, especially more distal fusions to the sacrum or pelvis. We see um, stress-related transfers of pain to that area. Similar to an adjacent segment, we develop a problem above the surgery, uh, in the case of fusion. We can develop the same adjacent segment problem below the fusion. Now that we have more information and more ideas and technology about treatment of sacral joint pain, I think it's become a more significant problem in our society. The difficult situation is that these patients have been diagnosed as failed surgery syndromes. And many of these patients get placed on chronic narcotic pain medication and other more chronic treat modalities such as implantation of stimulators. I think the key to the operation is getting a proper diagnosis obviously before the procedure. And really the gold standard for this is to get a diagnostic sacral joint injection so if they have a positive diagnostic injection that results in temporary, temporary improvement in their pain, and they fail long-term management with um, various treat modalities, and I think they become a good candidate for a sacred iliac joint fusion, that this is a fairly minimally invasive or less invasive procedure. Obviously, many of these patients, if they've had some failed back surgeries, have had a bad experience with their previous surgery which is a much more extensive and intense procedure and recovery period. Once we make them comfortable with the idea that this is a very small procedure with only an overnight stay in the hospital, with no bracing necessary, with only a short term of partial weight bearing, and then significant function improvement as early as a few weeks postoperatively, I think then it becomes much easier to promote this procedure for these patients. So far, in my experience, we've done about 100 or so of these procedures, and in my opinion, we've had about 80, 80 to 90% success rates as far as significant functional improvement and decrease in pain.